Hello there and thanks for watching another video from the Ultimate Linux Newbie Guide. Don't forget to check us out, linuxnewbieguide.org. Today this video is going to show you how to install and use a little bit of the features within the Ubuntu Budgie Remix version. So sit back, relax and watch the next uh, few more minutes on this tutorial. So I've just uh, started off here by inserting the USB stick and setting my machine to boot from that. Let's have a look. So the first thing you'll see once you've booted up your machine is the installer. Uh, click on the install Ubuntu Budgie uh, button there and obviously I'm choosing English. Now to choose these two options here, install the updates and the third party updates will give you the latest version of Ubuntu Budgie um, whilst it's installing for you and also include some probably necessary drivers. So for example to listen to MP3 music you're going to need that second option there. I'm just electing to install um, and you know clear the whole disk. Obviously if you want to dual boot here you probably don't want to select that but I've just uh, pressed the uh, install button there. Um, this is pretty typical, this install steps in Ubuntu Budgie are almost identical to that of the ones for Ubuntu, Ubuntu GNOME um, and all lots and lots of other uh, Linux distributions today. So it should, should pretty much be plain sailing throughout your installation here that I don't think you should um, see um, any major issues. One thing I, you might see here is the resolution is pretty small and I, um, I had an issue where I had to resize my display because I couldn't see the continue button there. And I'm actually using a virtual box here to get this installation um, so I had to resize my window just to make sure that it's done. As you can see I'm just entering in my username and password here and um, putting a really insecure password in. Don't do that. Um, and then, yep, there I've made the resolution better, you can see now. Press continue. It'll install all the files that probably take you about 20 minutes, um, maybe more on a slower machine. And um, I just fast forwarded this part for you just so you can see. Um, there are some quite interesting little uh, tidbits of information you can see on that but it says welcome you see Ubuntu Budgie is a community driven Ubuntu flavor using the Budgie desktop environment and this at least gives me a moment to tell you uh, what a but, uh, Budgie is all about. Budgie is uh, created by the team behind Solus Linux which is a completely new um, uh, Linux distribution. It's not based on Ubuntu, it's not based on any other Linux distribution, it's um, its, its own um, pretty much its own uh, Linux distribution. I've actually got an installation video and a guide on the Solus operating system on uh, the Linux Newbie Guide, linuxnewbieguide.org, so check that video out if you are interested in Budgie and its desktop. But if you like Ubuntu, but you like the look of this Budgie desktop as well, it c this gives you the best of both worlds. All the Ubuntu packages, the use of the app software system and all that rest of that, it's all included in there. Anyway, I've restarted the machine after having installed it. You can see that everything went through very smoothly there. This is the, the Budgie desktop. So all the usual stuff with Ubuntu, it's all under there, under the hood. But you can see the desktop looks a bit different in Budgie than it is in the usual um, Ubuntu desktop. First off, this thing called getting started comes up, and it's really nice and simple. It shows you the sorts of things that you might want to use, uh, might want to do with a brand new installed machine. For example, install restricted extras. These are things like um, earlier on we we're talking about um, DVD software, MP3 software, just software that you know isn't completely 100% open source. It's still free software, but it's not. Um, it has a you know a license agreement which is not compatible with the, the GPL. So um, you can see that it's now installing the restricted extras. This is a completely unique little um, post installation thing. I haven't seen this in any other um, distributions anytime recently. It's automatically uh, found out that I'm using VirtualBox there and it's recommended to install the um, guest editions. That's really helpful, really user friendly. It, it's obviously been thought over um, quite well. You can see the video there is quite laggy on, on the scrolling and that's because the guest editions aren't installed. So it's 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 pulling everything together quite nicely there um, and it's, it's obviously aware of the end user quite straightforward there. So I'm installing the um, various drivers there for this machine to make it work better. And so you'd apply those changes and let the machine restart because these are um, 
these are using drivers um, which are different for the machine that you're running. So whilst that's doing that, there's a few other things. You can see the taskbar or the applications sort of shortcut is down the left hand side, whereas in Ubuntu GNOME or so forth, that's kind of more hidden. You can see as they come up, um, new applications appear and disappear as they're closed on that on that bar on the left hand side there. But it's all fairly straightforward. If you're used to the Mac OS dock, you can tell that that Mac OS dock is pretty much the same idea. It's on the left hand side there, but you can change the configuration options to put it down the bottom just like a Mac. There's a bit more um, information here about you know configuring things that you might want to do when you're getting started with your machine. Um, and it's, it's actually um, fairly useful some of the times when you get these wizards when you start up um, a machine for the first time it's just like a little help thing but this is interactive and it, and it you know really does um, familiarize, your, familiarize yourself with the desktop and uh, and help you configure some necessary things. This is the Raven Configuration Center. So it's called Raven. It's part of Budgie, um, but as a you know a separate widget, which you can configure. You can see it's got the cal uh, calendar straight there. It's got various settings, um, and you can add in applets at any point in time if you've got them. Um, so that kind of neatly tidies away there with that top right icon beside the power icon. It's a sort of tree symbol. Browser ballot was quite interesting, and again, and going back to this getting started, you can choose um, which browser you want to use as default. Now, obviously, Chromium is the default. It's the free open source version of Chrome, um, and obviously, you can install the proprietary Google Chrome just by clicking a button, and, and then it will make it default. So, again, this is sort of stuff that you would maybe sometimes in the past have to go down to the command line to install, um, but this has got all of this information you know, easily available and also it's just one click away sort of stuff. So very, um, very intuitive uh, setup. I'm, I'm really impressed at the, the finish on this as well. It looks nice. Um, it, it's clever. It's not as far as I can see that buggy or anything like that. It's, it's, it's well thought out. The budgie desktop itself on Solus is pretty solid, um, but it's nice to see how the, the people who behind Ubuntu Budgie have managed to pull that and make it solid uh, in inside um, obviously a different distribution of Linux, this time it being Ubuntu. So it's very, very well done, very tight. Um, the only concern I have at this point in time is that the Ubuntu Budgie uh, distribution is completely unsupported by Ubuntu. So it's relying on people who are contributors who are volunteers and so forth and if you you know if you run out of time for these sorts of things uh, you know what will happen to the project so um, if you can contribute and you are liking um, the Ubuntu Budgie desktop then I suggest that you either help out with your money help out with your time or you know help out with beer or something like that but um, I'm sure that they're always looking for people to help out in many different ways I know that there's donations available on the Ubuntu Budgie website. So you can see I'm going into the, the panel here and just there's lots and lots and lots of different little configuration items which are all nice to play with. The panel being the uh, bar along the top there. You can see you can reorder um, the little applets and, and add new ones if they come along. You can see that being reordered there. Okay, and that's just basically how to log out, log in of the machine. Let's have a quick look at the um, the applications that come with the machine and also how to install other ones. So the first, the middle icon there in the taskbar um, brings up the software center and this is the GNOME software center which you may be familiar with already but again the idea is pretty simple you click on an application you like the look of press the install button and off it goes you can also install operating system updates from this in the updates bar 
files again is the Nautilus um, GNOME file manager. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, it comes with um, the, uh, the a normal audio player. I think this is um, what's it called again? I forget the name of it. Anyway, it's it's a it's a the pretty much standard GNOME audio player. Uh, so you'll find it fairly familiar. Terminal is called Terminix. I haven't used it myself, but it seems um, f fairly feature full. If you have a look at the preferences here, you can see there's lots and lots of nice little configuration options for people who are pretty much power users of the terminal. So I think it's well worth a, a look at using the default terminal, which is Terminix here, as I say. Okay, up the top left there, you can see that there's the pull down. It's a sort of more standard sort of start menu, if you like. So going back to the sort of Windows uh, 2008, or sorry, 2003 and sort of before um, standard sort of start menu. So you can get that from the top left there, um, and you can have a look at the different uh, uh, applications which are pre-installed with um, with the Ubuntu budget there. Some of them will be familiar to you um, if you're using um, Ubuntu GNOME, such as the um, weather applet. It's not such a nice day tonight. I noticed this um, Plank application. I'm not, not sure what it is, but it didn't seem to be working. Um, so obviously there's little bits and bobs that uh, need to be looked at. So you can see there's some games. LibreOffice, the full Office suite, is installed. Um, the GNOME Giri email is, is also s uh, available for you. Now it's a pretty basic email client, so if you're if you're very, very basic with email user, then Giri's nice and well integrated with GNOME. Otherwise, I would suggest that you probably choose something else like Thunderbird. As you can see, GNOME uh, installed the Google Chrome browser. That's on there. So as you can tell, um, with the Budgie desktop, it is still it does still have GNOME under the hood, but it's it's a tight integration with the Budgie desktop. So it gives you the kind of the best of both worlds. It's a different look on GNOME. It is a separate system. It's not it isn't GNOME, but it uses the GNOME um, base to give you what what you see today. So it's a very quick run through of the sort of applications that you get um, with the Ubuntu budget. Obviously going through the software center you can install whatever you want and of course it, you, you can use apt-get under the, under the hood as well. So that's really um, a very quick uh, introduction to Ubuntu budget. Obviously leave comments and I'll get back to you or check us out obviously on our website www dot linuxnewbieguide.org. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back sometime later with another tutorial. Until then, thanks for watching.